Now this squash definitely looks like it should be ready to be picked. I checked the skin. It's tough enough that my finger doesn't go right through it. It's a nice hard rind. And the stem is really thick and woody. And the rest of the vine is finally dying. So it looks like I should go ahead and pick the squash and save the seeds from it. It's been about six weeks. I uh, pollinated the fruit on uh, July the 28th. It is now September the 7th, so we'll go ahead and pick it for seed saving. After I've let it uh, cure for about 15 days, I'll go ahead and scoop out the seeds. Currently, the squash weighs two pounds, five ounces. And if I'm correct, over a period of 15 days, the uh, fruit should lose water weight and be much lighter by the time I harvest the seeds. Okay, it has been about two weeks since I initially weighed the squash. The squash now weighs two pounds, 3.6 ounces. It lost about two ounces of water over a two-week period. I now plan on cutting the squash open and collecting the seeds this week. The ruler here is just for scale to show how big the fruit is when I harvest it. It's about uh, 10 inches long compared to the uh, young fruits when they are normally picked as summer squash. They're about 5 to 6 inches long. So usually the uh, squash when fully ripe is about twice as long and has the rough leathery skin that cannot be dented with your fingernail. If I haven't mentioned earlier, the uh, squash has to be picked well after this stage when it would normally be picked as summer squash. In this case, I picked it around six weeks after it was initially pollinated rather than the two week period you would pick it if it were just a regular squash for eating as a summer squash. Uh, by this stage, it's very leathery and hard. I'm going to now wash it and cut it open. Okay, I'm going to use a carving knife to cut open the squash. The goal is to damage as few seeds as possible when, when uh, harvesting seeds. I'm going to try and cut it uh, lengthwise along the outside just to avoid damaging seeds. Nevertheless, some seeds will be damaged inevitably in the process. And I'll show you once I cut it open because I cannot hold the camera cut at the same time. Here is the overripe squash after prying it open carefully. Now I'm going to get a spoon and scoop the seeds out and the flesh, and then separate the seeds from the flesh. Here is the squash with all the seeds removed, and the seeds are in this bowl here. I will show you the rinsing process later, but right now I'm going to try and peel off the outer outer rind of the squash with a carrot peeler and boil it, boil the squash flesh. Hopefully the squash is still edible at this stage. That's what I'm going to find out by cooking it. I'm lucky the squash tastes good still in the uh, fully ripe stage, I, the seed stage, but not all summer squash can be eaten when fully ripe. There are some exceptions like uh, tatumi, and uh, a Hopi squash, but that's not always the case. After I bake it, hopefully it tastes good. I'll put it in the oven and we'll begin with the washing of the seeds. The good news is the squash doesn't smell like acorns and shoe leathers, and it's not so stringy that it's hard to remove from my teeth. So thankfully this squash also tastes good in the fully ripe stage when the seeds are mature. So definitely if you want to use this variety of squash, you can go ahead and use it as a spaghetti squash. Whenever I save squash seeds, I found out the best way to rinse off the pulp is just to uh, pick out the seeds, put them on a plate, and then take the seeds again and rinse them out in a colander. It's kind of involved. Might take a while. 
take more than an hour depending on how many seeds you have. When the seeds are fully ripe, they usually float to the top regardless whether or not they're viable. I'm going to go ahead and pick the seeds out and just put them in the colanders. After picking out all the squash flesh, after a bit of rinsing, the uh, remaining small filaments of squash flesh uh, fall through the holes of the colander. If not, I just have to pick the squash seeds out one by one. Show you what I'm doing. I got about uh, 220 seeds from the squash, but the number of seeds per squash can vary widely from as little as 35 to as many as 300. Looks like I got a good yield for this squash. Now after uh, rinsing out the squash, they need squash seeds, they need to dry for about three to five days to up to two weeks, depending on how wet the seeds are, just so that the outer filament comes loose and that the seeds can easily, the seed coat can easily be cracked. I will show you the seeds once they are fully dry in about a week. It has officially been three and a half days after I began drying the seeds and now the uh, papery outer membrane is finally peeling away from the seeds. Around this time is be when you can put the seeds into a uh, paper envelope. First off, remove the papery outer membrane. and then uh, blow away the uh, papery bits. After uh, drying your seeds and removing the membrane from them, pack them in uh, porous seed envelopes for them to continue drying. The seeds are not finished drying, so it helps to keep them in a breathable container so that the rest of the moisture can get out of them. Now, if you cannot find seed envelopes, you could always use small mailing envelopes or coin envelopes. These tend to be cheaper than seed envelopes and more readily available at uh, local stores. Now, that should be it for the video for saving squash seeds. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, you can go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, goodbye and have a nice day.